warm welcome for Dr. Harvey Fishman. Okay, okay, so now we're gonna get into what's, re what's really exciting, which is how the ocular, how the microbiome um, of our gut affects our eyes, okay? And this is something that, as I said, I'm very passionate about, and we're just starting to see some very exciting data. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about macular degeneration and how the microbiome we know can affect macular degeneration, uveitis, nonspecific autoimmune ocular disease, dry disease, and glaucoma. And there are really powerful data and very powerful um, examples in the literature showing this. So let's first talk about overall the human microbiota and ocular disease, and you can see the publications. It turns out that, um, and this is kind of interesting, that in dry eye patients, okay, there are obviously differences in different bacteria, which you would totally expect. And what's interesting is that there are certain bacteria, okay, that actually decrease goblet cells in certain patients. And so we know that goblet cells are obviously super important for keeping the uh, mucin level high in dry eye disease. And so we know that with dry eye patients and non-dry eye patients, that the bacteria that lives in, your, in and around your eye controls uh, it is different in different dry eye patients, and I'll show you more data on that later, and it changes the amount of goblet cell that you have in your, 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 your eyes. So we're working very hard, right, drops, and we do all these different things, and yet maybe the fundamental reason why we have these diseases in our eye really is the microbiome. It's controlled by the microbiome, and maybe we should be spending more time trying to understand how to impact and how to modulate that microbiome. Now, this is... Um, the, and I'll, and I'll, some of the theory behind it I'll get into in a bit, but basically um, the, the idea, at least um, amongst the microbiologists, is that in your gut you form bacteria that somehow sensitizes your immune system, okay, to thinking, to, to saying, okay, these, the, the gut bacteria, whether it's the good bacteria or the bad bacteria, and it sensitizes that bacteria and says, okay, this is, this, we don't, we, this, the, the, the immune system says this isn't what we want, this is not good. Now what happens is, and there's some really interesting data with the glaucoma model, that what happens is that when you, when you have a stressor, and it could be anything, and I'll get into that in a bit, but when you have a stressor in the retina, then the immune system actually goes in there and attacks the retina. And it turns out that if you have the wrong bacteria or the right bacteria, right, you will or will not develop this, this immune response to a stressor in the retina. Now, the impact of that is huge because, you know, yesterday we saw a beautiful talk on, neovascular, or on imaging and neovascularization. They talked about all the new drugs that we're using in macular degeneration to try to hit this inflammatory, the different parts of the inflammatory um, uh, cycle, especially with respect to um, uh, the uh, adaptive immunity, okay, and these different um, innate immunity systems, and, and we look at the different uh, pathways. But what's really interesting is that, it, that the immune system is such a big part of macular degeneration and all the other diseases, and it turns out the immune system may be sensitized by the, the gut bacteria. And, the, and, the, and really, the question is, are we, why are we spending so much time chasing inflammation in the retina and trying to attack uh, these different levels with anti-VEGF and so forth. Why are we not uh, you know, attacking the basic etiology of why the inflammation occurs in the first place or why the retina gets attacked? Important. We know that the, the, the microbial uh, chemistry in the milieu in the, in, the, in, the, in the gut is super important, but how can we actually um, influence this to influence disease? Well, one of the ideas is that we can target specific causative bacteria. Okay, so can we, uh, like, with pinpoint accuracy, eliminate one bacteria to, you know, to make your, to make your gut biome better? And, and that's one of the questions that we have. Get this here. Um, the second would be, can we, um, and can we, for, can we actually shift that, um, that ratio by actually administering oral, you know, live oral bacteria, oral live bacteria strains, okay, that we know promote immune homeostasis, okay? So, that, so that's an interesting question, and, and, and that's a, obviously what a lot of people are doing now, which is they're using probiotics, and they eat probiotics, they eat fermented foods, they eat all of these, we all eat these things with the idea that we're repopulating or we're trying to repopulate our, our intestine um, with the quote-unquote good bacteria, and that's certainly an interesting uh, uh, way we could, we could um, you know, approach it. 
uh, uh, you know, as physicians or as people who, you know, want, with, you know with, with the ability to make specific antibiotics, the question is, can you use chemicals or, and other antibiotics that actually nail certain target metabolic pathways um, in, the, in the bacteria? And then there are other interesting ways of, of manipulating the gut. For instance, um, there's a lot of talk about not only the bacteria in your gut, but what the bacteria eat. And one of the expressions that I've heard, it's not what you eat, it's what your bacteria eats. You are what you eat, but you are what your bacteria eats, okay? And the bacteria then processes those foods and then interacts with your entire body in, in interesting and fascinating and completely complex ways that we have no idea um, at this point how it actually works, but we do know that it's important. We do know from all the data and all the experiments that we've done that there is some really interesting associations. So the question is, can you, can you, can you get a, you know, if you have a high fat or a high fiber diet, okay, does that help? And then, of course, there's this one, which I love, right? Oop. The famous poop transplant. I this is powerful, powerful, powerful types of medicine, powerful stuff. It's powerful in, because you can, you can make disease go away or you can improve disease, but you can also really affect it in, a, in an adverse way. And really in the next many years, and I, I truly believe that when we, um, when we look back uh, and we, in 10, 20 years, we'll, we'll know how important this inflection point is in, in, our, in medicine today and our understanding of trying to, or trying to understand how we can um, attack this problem.